This is Ranjit Atwal. And Ben Hardy. And today we'll be discussing why lasing requires an active medium with three levels or more. So let's begin by discussing what a laser is. Laser, which stands for light application by stimulated emission radiation, is a method of deriving light that is both spatially and temporally coherent. This refers to the fact that when light is produced from a source, i.e. a light bulb, it produces electromagnetic wave of varying brightness, wavelength, colours and waves that are travelling in many directions. The difference between normal light and laser light is that it's monochromatic, so that just one wavelength is present. So normal light comes out from the light bulb like you're seeing on the screen, going in all different directions, mixture of colours, and this is completely different to how laser light travels. So when the light goes into the active medium, you have a single photon travelling in its own uh, wavelength with its own energy. But then the light that you want out, you want to have many different photons, but all travelling in the same spatial coherence and temporal coherence. So you have each wave going in exactly the same direction, all parallel, and all with the same wavelength, and all travelling in, in phase with each other. Easing to occur, the process of stimulated emission must occur. To understand stimulated emission, we must first of all understand the basic anatomy of the atom. The atom consists of a nucleus made up of protons and neutrons, orbited by electrons. These electrons can vary in their energy content, dependent on which orbit shell they are in. Though there are many different energy levels at which electrons can exist, let's take a simplified view in which only two energy states exist. Imagine in this diagram two energy levels. Firstly, we have N1, which is also known as the ground state. This is the level at which the electron possesses the least amount of energy and is most stable. The other state is N2. Um, this is the state when the electron is in a more um, excited state and has a high amount of energy relative to a state of N1. When an active medium is radiated by a light, a process of absorption occurs. The photons of light are absorbed by the electrons in the medium and this gain in energy moves the electron from the ground state in N1 to a higher energy level N2. The process of absorption leads to attenuation which means a reduction in the light output. But all particles prefer to be at a lower energy state, the ground state. Um, so now we get a process of stimulated emission. Photons instant into the matter stimulate electrons to transit from a higher energy level, N2, to a lower one and emit a photon. The instant photon and their emitted counterparts have the same wavelength and phase. This wavelength corresponds to the energy difference between the two energy levels. A photon stimulates an atom to emit another photon, and hence two identical photons are resulted leading to an amplification of the photons. Another process of amplification is spontaneous emission, in which an electron spontaneously emits a photon to transit from a higher energy to a lower one, i.e. moving from N2 to N1. For lasing to occur, the amount of amplification by st uh, stimulated emission needs to be much greater than the amount of attenuation caused by the absorption by caused by absorption sorry. However, this is not possible in a two level system. To explain this, we need to explain the energy transitions in terms of Einstein's coefficients. Absorption is the movement of electrons from the ground state N1 to the excited state N2. And the rate is dn1 by dt, and is equal to the number of electrons in the ground state n1 multiplied by the available energy, rho v, and a coefficient. This constant is Einstein's coefficient, and is specific for each energy level in each atom. So, for absorption in this atom, it is b12 for the movement from one to two. Spontaneous emission is the same, but is not dependent on the energy 
in the field and also it's the movement from electrons from N2 to N1. For stimulated emission, it is the opposite movement of electrons from N2 to N1 and this movement is proportional to the number of electrons in N2 and the Einstein coefficient B21 and the energy in the field, rho V. At room temperature, according to Boltzmann statistics, most electrons will be in N1 and not in N2. So the rate of absorption is going to be much higher than the rate of stimulated or spontaneous emission. So even at higher temperatures, the population of N2 does increase, but it will never be higher than N1. So, so far, we have come to the following conclusions. For lasing to occur, you require a process of population inversion. This is when there is a greater proportion of electrons in the N2 energy level than N1. However, in a two-level system, N1 is much, much greater than N2, as um, incoming photons are more likely to be absorbed than stimulated emission of a photon from one of the few atoms in the excited state. What little radiative emission that does take place is usually largely due to spontaneous emission. So at room temperature, negligible stimulated emission occurs and no amplification occurs, so there is no lasing. To create a population inversion, you need to create a situation in which thermal equilibrium does not prevail. So now let's consider a situation in which the electrons of the atom can exist in any one of three energy levels. First, we have N1 again, the ground level. This is the minimum amount of energy that the electron can have. Then we have N2. Again, this is a higher energy level relative to N1. And now, consider a third energy level, the pump level. By providing a pump to the active medium, you are able to move the electrons not only up just up to level N2, but beyond this up to the pump level. We ha now have a situation where the, we have electrons of higher energy than N2. However, this is not a very stable energy level, and you get a very fast non-radiative decay to the metastable state. Electrons exist in the pump level at a time of 10 to the mi minus 12 seconds, compared to electrons that exist in the metastable state for 10 to the minus 3 seconds. This time difference of 10 to the minus 9 allows a larger proportion of electrons to exist in N2 compared to N1. Now, we have a situation of population inversion occurs. Now we can have a process of stimulated emission and amplification of our light waves.